All right, so the examples that I work are examples 816 to 821. All right, so 816 asks us to, it says Esquire Clothing is a manufacturer of designer suits. The cost of each suit is a sum of three variable costs, which is direct material costs, direct manufacturing labor costs, and manufacturing overhead costs, and one fixed cost category, which is um, manufacturing overhead costs. It says that the variable manufacturing overhead cost is allocated to each suit on the basis of budgeted direct manufacturing labor hour per suit. For June 2014, each suit is budgeted to take four hours. Budgeted variable overhead, budgeted variable manufacturing overhead cost per labor hour is $12. The budgeted number of suits to be manufactured in, two, in June 2014 is 1,040, and then it shares the actual figures. So it says that the actual variable manufacturing cost in June was 52,164 for 1,080 suits started and completed. There was no beginning or ending inventory of suits, and it says actual ma direct manufacturing label hours for June was 4,536 you're asked to first compute the flexible uh, budget variance, the spending variance, and the efficiency variance for variable manufacturing overheads. So if we, so the first part, So, so for the person who says, um, okay, maybe, all right, um, all right. Someone is requesting that I post the questions that we go through um, at the next class. So yeah, maybe, I, maybe I'll do that. I'll take them into consideration. But normally the, the questions that I post are at the end of the chapter. So you should be able to just flick to, to the, um, the end of the chapter and see the questions. Good. Um, so the, clicks when you um, have your screen and you're using the same screen to view the lecture and then you got to click off the smaller the lecture to view the textbook. So if you know from before, we can actually print the questions out. Okay. All right. That's a good, that's a good suggestion. All right. So, so when we look here, um, you're given the actual cost actually. So if you go back to the question, it says, actual variable manufacturing cost for June was 52,164. So that shouldn't be a trouble. So you know actual cost. And this is the template that you could use. So you have actual cost in one column, then you have the next column, which is, um, and this is for the variable part, right? Then you have actual input quantity times the budgeted rate. So you also know, so to calculate that, you know, the question tells you that the actual direct manufacturing labor hours for June was 4,536. So you're given the actual input quantity, right? And then you, you're also told um, early up in the last, in the second to last um, sentence of the first paragraph, it says, for June 2014, each suit is budgeted to take four hours. So you'll expect that this is the budget and uh, the standard time that they, they expect each suit to take. And then it further tells you that the budgeted variable overhead cost um, per labor hour is $12, right? So to get the second, the second um, number, it's the actual hours times the budgeted rate of $12 per hour. Flexible budget now, all you flex for is the actual output. So remember we flex in for the actual output. The actual output was 1,080 um, suits. We expect four hours per suit. So 
if you're looking at, at the formula that I put in, in the comment in the, on the um, cell, you'll see it's a budgeted quantity, budgeted input quantity allowed. So remember we're allowed four hours per suit. So it's four hours per suit times the 100 and the 1,080 suits that we actually produce times the budgeted rate, um, which was $12 per hour. And that will give you the flexible budget amount for the, um, for the variable overhead in calculating the variable overhead. In this, in calculating the variable overhead variances, the flexible budget amount and the allocated amount will always be the same. So there will never be a variance when you look at, um, when you compare these two figures. The allocated amount, um, again, is simple. So it's a budgeted input quantity allowed. So that's the standard, the four hours times the actual output, which is 1,080 suits times the budgeted rate. So that is the amount that you will, um, during the year, keep allocating and recording in your financial system, in your accounting system. So those are, that's how you get the four um, values that we have here. So you're given the actual cost. You're told that um, you, you know the actual input quantity. You're given the hours and you know the rate. So you can calculate this second figure. For the flexible budget amount, you know you flex it for the actual uh, output, which was 1080 times the input quantity allowed per, per, per output times the budgeted rate. And that's how you get a flexible budget amount. The flexible budget amount and the allocated amount is always equal to the same. When we're looking at, um, we, uh, when we're looking at the flexible budget variance. Uh, so when we come to compute the variances now, the spending variance is the difference between actual cost and this second cost here, which is the actual input times the budgeted rate. That is the spending variance. What I worked back, what I worked back for you was the was the um, the rate per hour that they actually charged. So, so I knew that the actual cost was 52,164. And all I had to do to get this rate of 1150 was to divide it by the actual input hours that we use, which was 536. So could you just um could you just mute your mics? So that will give me the actual rate of eleven fifty. So remember I told you when we look at the spending when we look at the spending variance, essentially what you're comparing here is just this rate that you would have actually paid 11, um, 11 50 against the $12, $12 that you would have budgeted for. So that, that is what gives you the spending variance because we, we, we both- The manga escape thing I think there. It's like- Could you just mute your mics, please? Right, so, and then when we look at the efficiency variance, when we look at the efficiency variance, um, we, the efficiency variance is the difference between the actual input quantity times the budget rate minus the flex, um, the flex budget, right? So that will give us, um, that will give us an unfavorable variance because this actual input quantity times budget rate is actually more than the flexible budget. So the flexible budget is essentially saying for, for the production of 10,800 suits, this is the cost that we should incur as variable overhead costs, right? This is the cost we should have incurred, but instead we incurred, um, if we use the actual hour times the budgeted rate, we are showing that um, we're, we're actually recognizing more costs. So we are saying we were less efficient um, than we actually was, that we actually were. 
So you have a unfavorable variance here, efficiency variance, and you had a favorable spending variance simply because um, the actual cost was less than the actual input times the standard rate that you had of $12. When we compare the two together, you will end up with a flexible budget variance, which is actual cost minus the flexible budget. So you actually end up with $324 um, unfavorable. As one, per, one student asked in the last class, why was the whole rationale of going through all of these variance analyses? So if we would have taken, just look at the flexible budget variance, we would have seen a, a variance of just of $324, which in, the big, which in the grand scheme of things, if you compare, um, you know, total, total actual cost, well, the cost here that you have here, 52,164, that would have been less than, less than a percentage point, right? So you would say, maybe it's no use investigating that variance. But what that variance does, if you don't split the variance and have a better understanding, you wouldn't recognize that, um, that you had a spending variance of a favorable one of 2,264. And then you'd want to um, understand why did I pay only 11.50 per labor hour than $12, what happened, right? And then the unfavorable efficiency variance, you'd want to know, well, why did I spend more um, why did I spend more hours than I should have actually spent? So the 320 just, um, the, the two variants funds each other and then really hides away the, the individual effect on spending and efficiency variance. So that's one of the reasons why you really go through variance analysis. Um, you start from the top and you work down uh, because hidden in those variances, um, could be significant variances if you just look if you just look at the higher order variance, which might be small, you you hidden behind that um, might be more significant variances. Part two, um, it's just a so brief. Hold on. Mm -hmm. hold on, before you go to part two, how did you get the flexible budget amount again? So the flexible budget amount here is the no, not that one, the fifth one, eight forty. Right. So the flexible budget amount, what we do, we adjust the budget for the actual output. So the actual output was 180, uh, 1,080 suits, right? And we're saying according to our standards, right? We expect to spend four hours on each suit and we expect to pay $12 per hour. So that's how we end up with the, with the 54, 820, right? If I was to come, if I was to um, compare, or just to have the static budget alongside this flexible budget, I would have just changed the eight, the ten eighty to ten forty that we originally budgeted for. So in doing the flexible budget, the only thing I change is the actual output, right? So it's the actual output times the budgeted. Um, input amongst in this, in this uh, example here is hours. And we know that the hourly um, pay that we expect to pay was, um, hourly rate that we expect to pay was $12 an hour. So that's how we ended up with 51,840. Oh, okay. Right. So can I make a suggestion? Sure. Sure. Okay. After going through this with you, I recognize that the problem, I don't know if other people are experiencing, but with me, Mm -hmm. When you're doing this via Excel, where I'm trying to keep up with my tablet and reading the question to see what is given and what is not, and you don't really have, you have nothing but numbers here. So this, this is making it, and you move, you talk very fast because you know what you're doing. So it's hard to keep up with you when you have material like this. So it's not, there's no working. Well, I've seen an Excel in the FX, in the um, taskbar, but it's hard to follow you at the speed you're going. Trying to keep up with the question and your material. All right, all right. But so here, what happens now? I mean, if I don't know the people who are looking at the, on on the computer, but if you use the computer and you get into Excel, then behind the numbers that you only see in your tablet has the workings. Okay. So in, in every cell, will have the workings. Okay. 
right no i'm talking about like when you're going through it now Mm-hmm. It's, you, you're moving really fast so it's hard to keep up with you i'm trying to remember what the question what they what the exercise is saying and keep up with what your okay. number so if you could slow down a bit that'd right. be good. no problem thanks no problem. all right so just to recap this question we were given actual costs right so the question almost will always give you actual costs for the amount that looks at budgeted um, input quantity, you know times the budgeted rate. You also given the, in the last question, in the last um, sentence in the paragraph just before the questions or the requirements of the, of the question, it says the actual direct manufacturing hours for the month was four to five, thirty six. So you're also given the actual hours it's just four to five thirty six times the budgeted rate that you would have expected to pay of twelve dollars. That would give you fifty four four thirty two. When we look at the flexible budget part, we know that each suit we will use four hours per suit, and we expect to pay twelve dollars an hour. The actual number of suit produce, suits produced was 1,086. Right, so that will give you the flexible budget amount. When we look at variable overhead um, variance analysis, the flexible budget amount will always equal the allocated budget amount. Right, for when you, when you, when you look at this in Excel too, you also see that some of the cells have comments in them. So not only um, some of the cells have formula, but they also have comments. So the, the best thing to do is really to look at it in Excel. And then you will see the comments with the formula, how, uh, which, what, what, every, um, what each heading represents and the formula that's in it. So that would really help. The spending variance, um, looks at the actual cost minus the actual input quantity times the budgeted rate. Essentially, what this spending <coughs> variance um, examines is how much you would have paid against how much you would have expected to pay. You would expect you expected to pay twelve dollars per hour, and in fact, you paid eleven dollars fifty. So if actual um, cost was less than the budgeted cost, then you have a favorable variance. In this case, you have a favorable variance of 2,268. That's a favorable spending variance. The next variance we look at is the efficiency variance, which looks at the actual input quantity times the budgeted rate minus the flexible budget amount. So what this one looks at is the actual hours that you would have taken times the rate and the actual hours you should have taken times the rate. So this four times eight, um, 1080 should have been the actual, should have been the hours that you expected to, to, um, to actually take to make these suits times the rate. So in terms of efficiency, you're saying that um, for 180 suits, Multiply by four hours a suit, you should have taken 4320 hours, so 4,320 hours, but you actually took 4 to 5, 36. So you actually took 4,536 hours. So in, essence, in essence, you're saying you took 216 hours more um, than you would have expected. And then that is multiplied by the rate of 12 and that'll give you an, a negative um, or unfavorable efficiency variance of 25.92. Right, the budgeted and the allocated will always be the same, so there will be no variance whatsoever. Right, so they'll, they'll, they'll and then we come down to the, the, the next level variance, which is the flexible budget variance, 
which looks at the difference between the actual cost incurred and the flexible budget amount. So the actual cost incurred is 52,164 and the flexible amount is 51,840. So you'll have an unfavorable flexible budget amount of $320, right? Part two um, has a write-up of how you would actually, what you would actually say, an example of what you would actually say about these variances. Um, and it says here that the spending variance of 2268 was because the actual variable overhead rate was 1150 for direct labor hours hour versus $12 that you would have budgeted for. Um, and you're saying that the unfavorable efficiency variance of 2592 was because each suit took an average four hours, uh, 4.2 hours um, versus the four hours that you would have budgeted for. So in a practical sense, it, it breaks it down now um, in, a, in a lot more practical sense. So if you look at um, maybe one of the reasons why it might have taken 4.2 hours is because um, one, you might have lost the staff and now you have a, a, a staff of a lesser skill replacing him. So essentially it sends up the average hour to, to um, make that suit. And then of course, if you lose a staff, an experienced staff, a skillful staff, you expect that staff rate to be higher than the new staff that you employ. So that might also explain why you, why you pay a lower, um, a lower wage rate. Any questions before we go on to 8-7? Hello, can you repeat? Could you repeat the question? All right. So if we move on to eight, seven, eight. answer. Could you repeat? The, could you repeat? No, I was saying you could move on. Sorry, I think it's okay. just the feedback we got from there, Mike. All right. So um, eight seventeen. says, um, which is a continuation of 816, says that Esquire Clothing allocates fixed manufacturing overhead to each suit using the budgeted direct manufacturing labor hour per suit. It says data pertaining to fixed manufacturing overhead costs for June 2014 are budgeted 62,400 and actual 63,916. Right, so Right away, when you look at um, the figures that they've given you here, you should have a sense of what is going on. So it says data pertaining to, to fixed manufacturing overhead costs for June 2014, budgeted was 62,400 and actual was 63,116. So again, if actual is more than budgeted, immediately you should know that this is an unfavorable fixed manufacturing overhead. Um, variance, right? Without even doing any work in. The first thing it asks you to compute the spending variance for fixed manufacturing overhead, comment on the results, and then it asks you to compute the production volume variance for June 2014. With, infer with what inference can Esquire Clothing draw from this variance? So I've put them both together. So we told that the actual result, so we know that the actual cost incurred, the question tells us it was 63,916. And it also tells us that um, the, the budgeted, says the budgeted, where is it? Right, it's a, a budgeted to, um, to incur 62,400. So since there's no indication that the suits that they produce didn't surpass capacity, then you'll expect that the budgeted and the flexible would be the same for fixed. 
right? Remember I made that point earlier that for in, in the fixed cost, um, the static and the flexible amount will, all, will almost always remain the same once um, the capacity is not exceeded. So you can safely take from, from the question and insert this into the flexible budget column and then the allocated amount. So for the allocated amount, um, what, what I did or what you should do, it's the budgeted quantity output allowed for actual input times the budgeted rate, right? The budgeted rate that we'll get is equal to the budgeted fixed cost divided by the budgeted output times the budgeted hour, budgeted labor hour pursuit. So we know that the budgeted fixed cost that we're given is 62,400 and the budgeted output that we had was 1,040 suits and the time we'll take the suit is four hours, right? So that would be 62,400 divided by 1040 times 12, that'd be divided by 4,160, and that will give you a, a budgeted absorption rate of, or allocation rate of $15 um, per suit. Any question on that calculation? Any questions? No, sir. All right. So just to go back the allocate the, the allocated amount to come up with the allocation, um, the allocation cost per suit, what you take is the budgeted cost. So you know the fixed cost, the budgeted fixed cost is 62,400. And you know that the budgeted output was 1,040 suits. And you know you've also estimated that you'll take 40, um, four hours per suit. So to get the budgeted rate um, per suit is just to take that um, budgeted fixed cost of 62,400, make the suits which happens to be 1,460. And you'll end up with $15 um, as the allocation rate. So when we go to the allocation rate now, you would have actually, to the allocated, you would have actually made 1,080 suits. So you will take 1,080 suits times the, the, the hours that you'll expect to make one suit, so that's four hours, times now the allocation rate of $15. And that will be the allocation cost that you will recognize. The variances, the spending variances, um, it's actual results minus the flexible budget. So that will be since actual is 639,016 and the flexible amount is 62,400. So actual is more than flexible, so it will be unfavorable. And now the 1,500. And $1,516. And then when we look at the production volume variance, it would be the flexible budget minus the amount we would allocated. And in this case, the flexible budget is less than the allocated, meaning that in the in our accounts, we would have recognized six to four thousand eight hundred dollars. But in fact, um, in in fact, when we flex the budget, we should have only incurred. 62,400. So we will have a favorable variance of $2,400. When we go to the, I think this is one that I added, the overall variance, which is the actual results minus by the, minus the allocated amount. And that will tell you whether you have an over allocation or on allocation. In this case, the actual results is less than what you would, would have allocated by $884. So you will have to go back to your, your accounts now and reduce costs because you would have allocated more. You would have recognized more in your accounts. So you'll have now to reduce costs by 864 using one of the 
um, techniques that we would have identified in one of the earlier lectures, whether it's prorated or we just take it directly to cost of sales, um, whatever it is. Any questions on this calculation? No, sir. Anyone else? No, sir, no question. All right. So a couple of possible explanations for the positive um, production variance. And again, it's positive because the actual cost is less than the amount that you would have um, allocated, right? So you're saying that capacity could have been incorrectly calculated, right? Again, um, the production vol volume variance looks at capacity. You're saying that that could have been in incorrectly um, calculated. So we're saying in this case that we might have um, been too prudent and, um, and limit our expectations of what the capacity was. The second point is that the employees could have worked more efficiently, so less reworks um, or scraps. Um, we're saying be better machines were used to sew, so we might have gotten an upgrade in the machine, so we were able to do things quicker. And then one on a more macro state, on a more macro level, then the company might have been able to acquire um, market share. And you could add to this using, um, because it's a question that asks you just to think, using other things like maybe they would have run up marketing campaign that is successful and you know those kind of kinds of things so this is where um, those who've worked before um, or those who are working um, will have an idea of some some of the things that could contribute to positive variances or negative variances those who have come straight from high school and just gone to university you might be at a little disadvantage any questions No, sir. All right, good. So we go to 818. So 818 asks us, says, um, we're looking here at variable manufacturing overhead vari variance analysis. It says the French bread company bakes baguettes for distribution to upscale grocery stores. The company has two direct cost categories, direct materials and direct manufacturing labor. Variable manufacturing overhead is allocated to products on the basis of standard direct manufacturing labor hours. Following is some budget data for the French bread company. So you're saying direct manufacturing labor use. It's saying it takes 0 0.02 hours per baguette. Um, the, manuf the, the variable manufacturing overhead, it's $10 per direct manufacturing labor hour. It says now the French bread company provides the following additional data for the year ended December 31st, 2014. It says a planned output is 3.2 million baguettes. It says the actual output was 2.8 million. It says direct manufacturing labor hours was 50,400, but the actual variable, an actual variable manufacturing overhead was $680,400. It says, what is the denominator level used for allocating variable manufacturing overhead? That is, for how many, how many direct manufacturing labor hours in French bread budgeting? Is French bread budgeting? So could we answer that? Could we answer that one? Any willing takers? So how many direct manufacturing labor hours is French bread budgeting? By fifty thousand four hundred. Says what is the denominator direct note? So direct labor hours is fifty thousand four hundred, and it says what is or how many direct manufacturing labor hours is French bread company budgeting? And we're looking at uh, what is the denominator level used for allocating 
variable manufacturing overheads. And variable manufacturing overheads is allocated to products on the basis of standard direct manufacturing labor hours. So essentially they're, essentially they're planning or their budgeted output of, is 3.2 million. And to get um, how many direct manufacturing labor hours French budget, um, bread companies budgeting is 3.2 million times the 0 0.02 hours per baguette. So if we go back here, the budgeted output is 2.3 million and you take for each baguette, you'll take 0 0.02 hours per baguette. So that will give you a total of six to 4,000 hours that they're budgeting for that particular year. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? No, sir. Right. Actually, this question came in, a, a similar question came in one of the earlier quizzes, right? So part two now asks us to, says, prepare a variance analysis of variable manufacturing overhead, similar to what was um, shown on page 304. So 304 had a, did it this way and then it did it in column leaf form. So what it did is say, you know that the, you do it in actual and flexible budget amongst. So actual is 2.8 million. Again, when you, when you do the flex budget, you do it for the actual output quantity. So that would be the same. And then you look at direct manufacturing labor hours, the actual results, which a question gives you is um, 50,400. So they actually gave you that. You would have expected though, um, for direct manufacturing labor hours, you will take, you would have expected to take 0 0.02 per baguette. So for you, um, under the flexible budget, it would be the same 2,800, but this time multiplied by the standard that you would have set of 0 0.02 hours. So that will give you 56 hours. So you've actually um, taken a shorter time than you would have expected to, right? If we're looking at it by just eyeballing it. So you actually took 50,400 and based on your standards, the French bread company standards, they should have taken 56,000 hours, right? This works back itself. Um, yes, please. Right, so if we look at um, labor hours per output unit, which is B minus divided by A, right? So it's a direct manufacturing um, hours that you have taken of 50,400 divided by the number of output baguettes. So you'll actually get 0 0.018 um, hours per baguette, which is lower than the 0 0.02 that you have as, has a, have, as, have as a standard. Then we go to variable manufacturing overhead costs. We were told um, in the question, we were given the actual amount of 680,400. So the question gives you that. But we would have expected, all right? We would have expected, we had a standard rate of $10. So the question also tells you that variable manufacturing overhead, um, we allocated at $10 per direct manufacturing labor hours. And we have calculated um, based on our flexed amount that we should have taken 56,000 hours. So we multiply that by the budget rate that will give us 560,000 hours. 560,000 hours, right. And uh, well, this is a work box. So you see the same $10 per hour but actually the rate that you would have paid would have been the manufacturing costs divided by the number of hours. So that would have been 680,400 divided by the hours that we actually took of 50,400. So that will give us an effective rate of $13.50, which is more than the $10 that we would have um, 
we would have had as, as a standard. And then finally, we look at um, the variable manufacturing overhead per output unit. So we would have taken the variable manufacturing overhead cost, the total cost, the actual cost of 680,400 and divided by the actual output amount. So we would have gotten 0 0.243 um, dollars for poor baguette. And then for the flexible amount, it would have been the $560,000 divided by the number of baguettes, which would have given us um, $0.2 per baguette. So then we go to the columnly working. So we know actual costs. Again, so we, there's no doubt in our guessing. We know actual costs is 680,400. When we go to the actual input quantity times the budgeted rate, Okay. All right. Right. So then we go to the act. So the second working is the actual input quantity times the budgeted rate. So the, times the budgeted rate. So the actual input quantity. Uh, we know that the direct hours. We're told that the direct hours was fifty thousand four hundred, and we're also told that we expected to pay ten dollars an hour. So that will give us this. $504,000. When we go to the flexible budget now, the flexible budget is the direct manufacturing labor hours that we expected or that is allotted to that um, for budget. So that would have been, that would have been um, as a form, they have it here or in the comments. That would have been the 56,000 um, hours that we calculated times the $10 per hour. And that will give us the 56, uh, 5, 560,000. And remember, we got that 56,000 by taking the actual output times the standard. So to get the flexible um, budget amount is the actual output of 2.8 million baguettes times the standard or, or what we call the input allowed for that amount, for that output, which was 0 0.02 hours per baguette, which will give you 56,000 hours. And then we multiply that by the standard rate that we had of $10 an hour. And that will give us a flexible budget amount. Remember the flexible budget and the allocated, they're always the same when we're looking at variable manufacturing overhead um, variance. So when we're looking at the variable manufacturing or variable overhead variance, the flexible budget and the allocated is always the same. So the calculation of the variance is now, the spending variance is a difference between the actual cost and the actual input quantity times the budgeted rate. In this case, we have the actual cost being way more than the, than the next figure, which is the actual quantity times the budgeted rate. Actual cost was um, 800, 680,400. And the actual quantity times the budgeted rate was 504,000. So we'll have, since actual was more than um, that figure, you will have an, an unfavorable or adverse variance of 176,400. And that's the adverse or unfavorable spending variance. To look at the efficiency variance now, we, um, the actual quantity times the budgeted rate was 504,000 and the flexible budget, or what we would have expected to spend according to our, our internal standards based on the output was 560,000. So we would have had, um, the flexible budget would have been more. So we would have had a favorable efficiency variance of 56,000. When we look at the 
when we look at the flexible when we look at the flexible uh, budget variance which is the actual cost minus the flexible budget we will end up actual cost was more than the flexible budget amount so you'll have an adverse variance of $120,400 as a flexible budget variance. Any questions? No, no, sir. All right. Um, we're asked to, and then we're asked to just discuss the variances you've calculated and give possible explanations for them. So we're saying for the spending variance of 176,400 176, unfavorable. We're saying that it's unfavorable because variable manufacturing overhead was 35% um, higher. So you paid 13.5 as against $10 per hour than planned. Um, a possible explanation could be that an increase in energy rates relative to the um, rate per standard labor hour assumed in the flexible budget. So the first thing you do when you're asked to explain the variance, you give the obvious. So you say that there was an adverse or favorable variance of X amount, and then you give a reason why um, it could have possibly. Well, you, you say, you, see, you give the absolute number, and then if you can give a relative number saying that um, it was 10% more or 10% less, and then you give a reason. So you give the absolute number, you give a relative um, comparison, so that's a percentage, and then you give a possible explanation. So you can read the explanations that I've given here, but surely um, you can come up with some more. Could I move on to the next questions? question? Yes, sir. All right, so, um, no, this is kind of similar to the ones we do. We did, so I'll do 820, which is kind of slightly different. So 820, 820 give us a table and it looks at manufacturing overhead and variance analysis. It says the principles corporation is a manufacturer of centrifuge. Fixed and variable manufacturing overheads are, locate, are allocated to each centrifuge using budgeted assembly hours. Budgeted assembly time is two hours per unit. The following table shows the budgeted amounts and the actual results related to overhead for June, 2014. And then they say, prepare an analysis of a variable manufacturing overhead and fixed manufacturing overhead variances using the columnar approach in exhibit 8-4 on page 304. So what you're asked is to prepare an analysis like this. So that's all you're actually asked. So the ones that I have in green, are the ones that I computed or um, that I computed, and the ones in the regular white um, the white background are the ones that were given in the question. Good. So you weren't given flexible budget. We had to insert that, but we were given figures for the actual results and some for the static budget. We were told that. Um, let's start on the actuals first. So we're given, we're told that the number of cent centrifuge assembled and sold was 225. We're told also that the hours of assembly time was 360. Um, and assembly, assembly hours per unit, 1.6. They, man, so we get the 1.6 by we get the 1.6 by taking the amount of assembly time divided by the number of units of centrifuge that we actually prepared. So that gives us the assembly hour per unit, right? So that's 1.6 hours per unit. 
in terms of the variable manufacturing overhead costs per assembly, per, per hour of assembly um, unit. We were also given the, just below that, we were given the variable manufacturing overhead cost and we're given the total cost. So to calculate the variable cost per hour, we just took the total cost that we were given divided by the time that we took, the total time that we took. So the total cost that we were given was $11,933 and the total assembly time was 360 hours. So to get the variable manufacturing overhead costs for hour of assembly time is just to take that cost and divide it by the time. And you will get $33.15. We're also given the fixed um, manufacturing overhead costs. And to get the fixed manufacturing overhead cost per hour of assembly time is to take that cost and divide it by, by the number of hours that we would have taken. So it's 12,180 divided by 360 hours. Any questions? No, sir. So I'll go to the static budget um, column first, since you were given that. In the static budget, you were given that the the number of centrifuges assembled and sold, that's the one that we expected, right, was 110. Um, and of that 110, we could calculate the hours of assembly time because we we're told that it should take two hours for each cent centrifuge. So it's two hours times um, the output of centrifuge of 210, so that of 110, so that will give us the total time of 220 hours, right? And then the two, the two hours that we work back here is just um, for the mathematics, because we know it is the assembly time is two, um, two hours per unit. Then we were given the variable manufacturing overhead cost per unit of assembly time of $32. So when we want to know the variable manufacturing overhead costs is just to take that hourly rate that they gave us times the estimated or budgeted um, assembly time that we would have calculated. So that would be 220,000 hours times the hourly rate of $32 that we were given. We were also given, we were given the fixed manufacturing overhead costs of Ten thousand seven hundred and eighty, and in order to get the fixed man fixed manufacturing overhead costs per hour of assembly time, is to just to take that total cost and divide it by the expected time that we um, would have calculated, which was two hundred and twenty, and that will give us um, an hourly rate of forty nine dollars. To go to the flexible. Um, any questions on the static budget column? No, sir. Okay, good. So remember when we go to the flexible part now. In the flexible part, we adjust for the actual output and then we use all the standards that we would have calculated in the budget to go Again, um, to multiply by the, by, by the actual output. So all the standards except, remember we spoke about the fixed manufacturing overhead cost, which will remain the same in the flexible budget once we do not surpass the capacity constraint, right? So we flex the budget for, to reflect the 225. So the 225, to get the total assembly time, we will multiply by the standard of two hours. Um, for the, for the variable manufacturing overhead cost time, again, the rate would be the same. The rate would be the same. That's the standard that we calculated in the budget and that will remain in the flexible budget. And we will use that to calculate the variable manufacturing overhead costs 
which would be the output of 225 um, centrifuge multiplied by the rate of $32 that you would have set. And of course, the manufacturing overhead cost remains um, the same. So that's it in, in the template that they would have provided in the textbook. Any questions? Uh, the variable manufacturing for flexible, when well, you multiply the 225 by what? 32. Okay. Right. Remember, so in the flexible budget, all we all we really change in is the output, and then we're using all those standard rates that we had in the budget to multiply by those lines. So if you had a standard rate for um for materials. It's the output times a standard rate that you had in your original budget, or a standard rate um, that you would expect it per unit of output. Same thing for labor, same thing for variable overhead cost. Fixed cost normally remains the same. 25 by 32 doesn't give you 14,400. 225 by, sorry, 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 Not my bad. So for the, for the variable manufacturing overhead costs, remember variable manufacturing overhead costs, we use um, the hours as the, as, the, um, as the allocation base. Sorry, so it's 450. Okay. The 225 is the actual output. So we are saying that the time that you will take for the output is two, um, two hours for each um, centrifuge. So that will give us 450, sorry. So the 1440 is 450 times the 32. So it's the hours times the hourly rate. Any further questions or clarifications? Point out of any slip ups? Good. So the same information that I provided here, um, I've done extra work and provided in provide it in the way that you've um, had it or seen it over um, the previous examples. So I went and I inputted the actual costs, which you were given, the actual quantity times the budgeted rate, which we actually calculated, uh, which we calculate here. So that will be the hours times the rate, so 360 hours times the rate that we, we would have had, the budgeted rate of 32. And then for the flexible budget, it would be the 225 um, centrifuge times the two hour standard that we expected times the rate, the standard rate of um, $32 an hour. And that will give us 14,400. The flexible budget and the allocation remains the same when we look at the variances, we'll see that the spending variance actual was more than the, than the actual quantity times the budgeted rate. So you'll have an unfavorable spending variance of $413. And if we look at the efficiency variance, the flexible budget amount was more than the actual input quantity times the budget rate. So we'll have a favorable efficiency variance of 2,880. And if we look at the flexible budget as a whole, the flexible budget variance, it would be the actual cost minus the flexible amount, which would be um, 2,467 favorable. Um, so we would have recognized more costs than we actually incurred. So then we have to go back into the financials and adjust for that. So we'll have to reduce costs. On the fixed overhead cost side, we know that the, we were told that the actual fixed cost that we incurred was 12,180. So that's actual. And the lump sum fixed cost that we would have expected to pay was 10,780. Um, that's also given the flexible budget and, and that remains the same, that doesn't change. Um, however, 
for the amount of amount that we allocated, that would have been the number of centrifuge times the two hours times the actual rate that we computed of $49. So we would have had um, an, an allocation far more than the flexible budget and the actual cost. So if, if we compare the allocation of flexible budget, we would have had a production, favorable production variance of 11,240. If we look at the spending variance for the fix, fixed overhead um, manufacturing, we, the actual cost was more than the amount that we had budgeted for. So we'll have a negative variance of $1,400. And if we look at the overall, um, the overall variance is looking at actual costs as against what we have allocated, We'd, we would have had um, actual cost of 12,180 and what we actually allocated of $22,050. Which, was, which will give us a favorable uh, variance of 9,870. So that we will have to go back to our financials and adjust them so as to increase profits. Because as it is right now, we would have already recognized $22,050, but in fact, it should have only been 12,050. So we'll have to go and reduce costs. I didn't do part three, a part two on this particular question. I think the part, all right, so I didn't do the journal entries. Um, you, you would recognize that because the class have many, many um, people who aren't accounting majors, I haven't done the journal entries in, or done any of the accounting um, in particular in this course. So no journal entries have, have been done. I went straight to, part three and provided some explanations. Any questions? Any questions on no, sir. 28? No, sir. But by now you should realize that almost all the examples we do are similar. There's a repeat to kind of everything we've done. And then for, for 2021 um, is similar to what we just did. Uh, so I would not repeat this and I'll leave you to go through this one. Any questions before we close? Are the letter U and F, is it necessary? Yeah, because you want to know, you, you want to communicate to whoever it is um, that is unfavorable or is favorable. Um, if you just leave it like that, then because it, it is kind of counterintuitive, right? Because now if you look at it, at it here, you see a positive number, but a positive number actually means that cost is more than, actual cost is more than you budgeted for. So it's you. So normally when you see a positive number, you, you would associate it with something good. But in variance analysis, when you're looking at costs, when you see a positive number, you know that actual is more than budgeted, so it's not a good thing. So yes, for, for communication to um, the other people who, who would use your reports, then yeah, it's necessary. Some people put um, A or P, so, or N or P negative and, um, positive or some people put adverse or what's the other word? Can't remember the other word. Favorable. Adverse or favorable, ARF, right? Same thing, right? So, but it, it's, it's just um, some standard protocols and I mean, you could put anything you want. Once at the end of the report, you put U means or, you know, um, if you put A or B, if you put B equals unfavorable and Z equals favorable, then um, that counts too. But just that the standard is U and F or A and F. Sir, with Sorry. regards to the quiz we have next week, can you change the quiz date from Tuesday? It's really um, hectic to 
to be have that exam, that present choosing. Why? You're supposed to get it's a quiz tonight. Both, we had both lectures, seven and eight, the same week here. We need time to process. Right, but the, so no, um, so you don't. Six, lecture six, seven, and eight, th those are the three longest lectures we have. But we had lecture six how long ago? A month ago? <laughs> three weeks ago? <laughs> Not no. Seven and eight is the same thing. Seven and eight is the same thing. So the quiz on Tuesday will look, only look at six and seven, really. Six and seven? Yeah, I need to, I need to finish this course when I'm supposed to finish it. I thought you G extended their class to me um June, July. So I can do it the other weeks. So I got four more lectures to do. So you want to do skip lecture and all of that? No, it's just you need to understand <laughs> people are home, they're they're with their family home, cheering in that school, government school closing. For um after this pandemic. I'm still at work and I'm there six six days a week. So we can do some revision for the time. Here it is. Nah. Let me cover the course content. And then when I cover the course content, when I left with only the exam, if you want, if you could get three weeks before you want to um, revise or whatever, that's all up to you. But I need to get this course content out of the way. Sir, excuse me. I got enough things to do. Huh? So no, we, we got to do the test on Tuesday. Test. Test. Do that again? Sir, we we have a class on Tuesday. Yeah, we can get a test on Tuesday. It's 10 questions, easy questions. What time, what time Tuesday? Because there's business communication on Tuesday. No, I'll open the test at um, 7 o'clock on Tuesday and it will close at midnight on Wednesday. Thank you, sir. Question, sir. Um, with regards to the midterm, there was a question, uh, uh, or a calculation question there. I, I can't remember it exactly, but... um. Would you mind posting the, the uh, workings for those calculation questions we had on the midterms? More than likely, I will do that before um, before your finals. Just do it like a, a week or so back so we could actually start processing it so we'd know. Because there was one particular question I think was some, no, anyways, I can't remember exactly. Oh, yeah. so one question particularly puzzled me and there was I think two questions came on the same um, thing. Two calculations on the same question. And I couldn't... Sorry, there must be three or nine. Same question. Um, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll work them out and, um, and, and send them before your finals for sure. Well, let me focus on getting these other four presentations for um, lectures out for us. Because if, if you think it bad, I just read... You see the chapters? I just read it twice. I just read it one time to just reacquaint myself back with it and then read it again in depth and go through slowly. And you see these six questions, sometimes this take me a couple hours. As I was telling the class on Wednesday, um, for lecture seven, there was one particular question that had me stop. I must have spent almost about two hours on the question. It was until I went to bed and get up the next morning. And that's the yeah. thing. You had to, you had so many hours to sit and work it. Some of us don't even have those hours on our hands to just sit and go through those questions. The little time we have, we have to make sure we go through because there's a lot of things people need to, people get to do. No, 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 no. I just, this is the time that I put on the side for you, you know. This is time I could be doing several things. So, so I'll tell you that I lecture at UG is just volunteering. I mean, I... I just think you you're not. No. <laughs> this is doing for free. <laughs> this is absolutely free, but I just feel that, I mean, um, I just feel that if you could share knowledge, you just share the knowledge. So. Oh, yes, those, sir. The question is, was on equivalent units for the midterm. Those two questions, I couldn't process it. Sir, it's the same question I asked you about, sir. Three and nine. Equivalent okay. units and how much it work out to in terms of the cost, those question three. I'll, I'll, I'll go and work. more than like when I work them out. Of work. I'll, I'll put the answers together. So, I'll find so excuse me. Um, will you be posting the material tonight for this number yeah. eight? Yeah, I'll post this and I'll post the recording too. Uh, oh, the other thing is... Um, so we got two more quizzes, right? One we do on Tuesday, and then we don't do next week Friday, but the other week Friday, and we finish. But for the finals, because I want to do like 40 questions for finals, 
and I don't want um, people being online. I know people can't stay online for three hours or three and a half hours. It's just not going to happen. It doesn't matter how good the internet connection is, and it's not going to last for three and a half hours. So what I'm thinking to do is to do it in two parts. So we do um, 20 and 20. So we do two two hours. Um, if that's read or two two one hour fifty minutes or so, because one is going to be um, twenty is going to be um, theoretical questions, and the other twenty is going to be computational questions. Sorry, two 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 hours sounds good. Two two hours. <laughs> For the theoretical questions, you should do them questions in half. I know if you really read this stuff. Um, excuse me, sir. Can you use the Moodle platform instead of Edmodo for the exam? Because the Moodle platform gives you um, the option to flag questions as you go through. And then when you finish, you can just view all and then go to the ones that you flagged. So you don't have to flick through all to get back ones that you didn't answer left back for the last or anything. Um, it's a bit more easier to navigate to what I'm getting at when you compare it to um, Edmodo. Edmodo. Um, um, I'll think about it, but then my learning curve in Moodle and start from zero. And okay, um, I'm already getting tricked in Edmodo. So, well, not really tricked because I can see it. <laughs> okay. Sir, would the finals be on from lecture one to the 10 or whatever? Yes. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, it would be an all. Um, it, I mean, it's 20 questions. Um, if you come as a group and say, well, we got difficulty with this particular lecture and maybe we shouldn't do two questions or it or what, then you could probably share that. But I, I was thinking on doing them back to back days, um, two, two hours, but another student had had suggested that we do it the same day, um, different times of the day. So that's no, something. Sir. That's something. Uh, sound like pressure. But if we do it, I'll do it back to back days. Um, back to back days, twenty twenty, and that's it. At the end of the course, though, if we got anybody struggling, then um, those people might be given a chance to do. Um, a makeup quiz or something. Or what date are you looking something. at? Um, sorry to disturb. Mm -hmm. Can you just try to like change this format instead of using Excel, like use a Word document or something normally how you give us the worksheet? Because when you we have this lecture going on and you're using this Excel, it makes me like we gotta keep looking at the formula you plug there and then it has like A1, A2 or the numbers and then you gotta look to it's very distracting. I don't really like this. I can't function with this Excel thing properly. So um, are you an accounting major? No, sir. Oh, that's right. I believe so, that's why. Right. So the thing is that, I mean, the thing is in, in, in accounting, you gotta know Excel well. I mean, if, if you want to be a decent accountant, besides knowing an, an accounting software, you gotta know Excel fairly well. And and um, Word, even if I do it in Word, then I got, the only, uh, it can be really bad um, to use formulas in words. So I still got to use an embedded Excel worksheet like I did um, in the other one. So just, just, just bear with us for another four weeks and then you could forget about it. So, <laughs> sir, I think, I think if you um, probably upload the, um, the Excel sheet them earlier in the day or something so persons can print it off. So uh, while you go through, they can look at it and then make their notes and jot in. So it might be easier for them to follow that way. Yeah, All that's right. yes, yes, sir. I agree. I agree. What we're doing. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, that's reasonable. That's reasonable. Um, sir, one more question. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to review the questions that you got wrong for the midterm exam? Uh, review as in what? I mean. Go Check back to, to see the, the ones that you got wrong. If you could see the ones that you got wrong? Yes, sir. Um, I, I'm not sure I, if I could open it. I, I'm not sure. Um, hmm, I'm not sure. All right. But like, I mean, when I share the, when I share the solutions, hopefully it might, it might trigger something for you. Normally on Edmodo, when you do the test, at the end, you do get to review, but you block yours. 
Yeah, because of my experience in the first test. Excuse me, yeah. sir. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Excuse me, sir. You said the um, quiz will be on lecture six and seven. Uh -huh. Lecture six, then we didn't cover that in midterm. So you should be happy. <laughs> no, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We did somewhat, but I think it was only one question on that or two questions. Okay, okay. All right. No problem. Good. So five and done, five on the other one. Good. Um, so um excuse me, sir. For the exam for the quiz next week, it's just um lecture six and lecture seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then the final one, I'll decide which one it be. But it might not be this one. So we got a couple more. Uh, well, I think we got one theoretical one that looks at um, balanced scorecards. So, the sure. Can you look into the um, lecture seven because I'm not getting access to it? Well, who who else getting the same issue? Anybody anybody getting access to le lecture seven on from Edmodo by just pressing the link? No, it's, sir. Nobody not getting access to it? Yes. I got I'm, I'm, getting, I'm not getting access. Sir, I'm not yeah, getting not access to the audio, the thing that you sent. I'm not getting to it. Yeah, it's requiring some ID and password. Yes, it's requiring a username and password. an ID. Yeah, that's what it's it does what you're telling me to. Um, do you have do you have um the are are you do you have the like uh, um like a a permanent link on your computer and you just go to that and then you try to get to the um, recording? Or are you pressing on the link and go to trying to get the recording? The the link We're trying pressing to open it from Edmodo. Edmodo. Yeah, I'm trying to open it from Edmodo. This should normally, normally this shouldn't give you an issue. It's asking for Click a username and password. Click on the link for us. I got that. I sent you a, um, a picture of what it, what it is asking for in your Gmail. All right. So it's, it's asking Access. for the university post, portal um, user's name and password. All right. Uh, let, let's. So. One minute. Um, let's see how this works. Um, where am I? Where am I? I'm trying to share my screen. Where is it? Are you seeing Edmodo on my computer? Yes, yes sir. Sir. Yes, right, sir. So this is the link, right? So all you're supposed to do is just press on the link and then play it. So that's not what happening. So when we click on that link, we just get it at the login for the university. You have to put in a username and password. All right. All right. Just send me the, um, send me what's happening. Let me find out. From... I sent it in your Gmail. I mm -hmm. sent it already. All right, good. I'll check it and I'll. So you're not even get to see the transcription at the side like this. No, no, not, sir. No, no, sorry, no, sir. no, no. All right, I'll I'll check on it for you. Strange. Sir. All right. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Go can ahead. You, can you say one of the test two, please? Could you speak up, please? Can you say one of the test two? When would be? Test two. Test two? Yeah. The next quiz would be on Tuesday. Okay. But if, so if I can't rectify the issue on lecture seven by tomorrow morning, then the quiz would be on what we teach tonight because it's similar to lecture seven. 
because then some people would not have access to it. So it will be on this one and lecture six. That's if I don't rectify it by tomorrow morning. When is the next mid-semester exam, sir? Quiz, please. The exams? Yeah, the mid-semester. Mid-semester? There's no other mid-semester. There's only the quiz, the summary, the summary of the quiz plus the mid-semester we already do. The next exam is the final. Right. So the mid-semester was 25% of the marks. Out of the five quizzes that I'll do, I'll take the best three scores and they'll make up 15% of the marks and then the final is 60%. Okay. All right. Don't worry. If we get anybody struggling, then they probably get another um, assessment. Can I, can I clean for some reason? Could you repeat? Go by, go by Rihanna, Jay. All right. Anything else? No, sir. All right. Have a good night. Same to you, sir. Okay. Sir. Yeah.